Elden Ring is one of my all time favourite games. Not just to play, but to experience. Its world is nothing short of breathtaking. There were countless moments during my playthrough when I found myself standing still, simply staring into the distance, lost in awe. The lands between evoke a unique atmosphere, grim, mysterious, and divine all at once. It's a world that doesn't just invite exploration, it overwhelms you with a sense of wonder. So, as an environment artist, I felt compelled to pay tribute by recreating a portion of this masterpiece in Unreal Engine 5. Unfortunately, I didn't record the entire process of me working on this environment, but I'll dive into the projects and try to break down the most important parts. Hopefully, that will still give you a lot of tips and tricks to put into your own environment as well. So, let's get started. Looking at the game environment, you can clearly see the verticality of those lands and also how they have separated each layer to give a sense of depth. Knowing this, I also want different layers in my landscape. By taking this to heart, I also made sure that my composition has all these different layers. But I also want to simplify this a little bit compared to the game because I'm only working with one camera angle. so. The viewers also have to get a sense of depth without needing to look around for instance. Therefore I went with three layers, the foreground, the midground and the background. You can also add another layer very close to the camera to add some sort of parallax effects as the camera zooms into. This adds more depth into your scene. Now to have those layers, it's important to have a base land to set things upon, like the landscape or the static mesh mountain at the back. My approach was simple for this one. For the main foreground and midground, I sculpted using Landmass plugin for Unreal Engine. And by using height maps with the plugin, you can sculpt out natural looking ground elevations very quickly. I also used manual sculpting to smooth things out a little bit in the end, but most of the sculpting was done with the plugin itself. I made sure that the elevation goes up as you go further into the distance. Then for faraway lands, I just used static meshes to craft out a silhouette from the camera angle. I also used nanite displacement for the foreground landscape. It helps to give a lot more detail into your ground. When I made this environment, I had very limited time. I was trying to finish this within two days during the weekend. So I didn't have time to model everything from scratch. So I turned to Cosmos by Leiter Studios to look for the best environment packs out there to craft my scene. While this is not a sponsored video, I still would like to give the right amount of credit to them because they have been helping me out with supplying these assets since I started working in Unreal Engine. And they were kind enough to send me a subscription for their Cosmos platform. Even amazing games like Claire Obscure Expedition 33 used one of their packs to kick off their project. And from that same platform, I downloaded these two packs, a fantasy castle pack by Leotard Studios and medieval fantasy ruins by Scans Factory. If you want to find out more about the platform, I'll leave a link down below in the description. I 
by using those modular assets, I wanted to quickly add a few key elements into the scene. For instance, something like a church, some ruins, and a big structure to overall capture your eyes. Now, I'm placing them strategically depending on the composition that I wanted to go for, but I'll talk a little bit more about the composition a little bit later. All of these things that I mentioned were made up of a few modular pieces from the packs that I downloaded. I also wanted to add some sort of a knee height water in the foreground, so I added a water plane. Then I thought the small arch in the middle was looking a little bit boring, so I added a campfire there. Foliage is also another important part in creating this environment. The process was simple, it was just a few of the mega skins, trees, bushes and grass painted manually using the foliage tool in Unreal Engine. I was able to get almost a full picture of what I wanted to go for. Now I've mentioned this before but with foliage you want to have a gradual fall off. In this particular scene I wanted some sort of shorter bushes around the ruins but taller trees as you go into the distance. Now that I've filled out the bottom of the image I also wanted to fill out the top part because it's feeling a little bit bold up there. And I wanted to play something that is inviting and has a strong silhouette. So something like a castle will not only help, but also fit the description that it's Elden Ring inspired environment. When I was building out this castle, I didn't care how it looked close up because we'll never be able to see those from a distance from the camera view. As you can see, if you look close enough, it doesn't really make sense of how everything has been built out. But, from the camera that I have set up, it felt like a full castle. Now onto the fun part, set dressing the scene. You can go crazy in this phase because your environments become more alive the more you detail with props, storytelling elements or lore related stuff if it's in a game. I've played multiple playthroughs in Elden Ring so I know what assets to use where to place them to feel a little bit more like the game itself. And I spent the entire evening just doing that. And it was such a blast to be able to bring the scene to life. For instance, adding those gravestones very close to the camera. Or the lonely shack up on the hill. Or that sorcerer tower way in the background. These things can actually tie your environment together. So do spend a lot of time trying to set dress accordingly. I want to quickly touch upon a subject of composition in this particular scene. I have separated each main element into different layers and different parts enough so that they can be observed on their own. For instance, I have the church as the main foreground element, the ruins in the middle ground, drawing attention using the campfire, and larger structures like the bigger arch, ruin, and the castle in the background. I also want to point out a few of the thought process in placing these assets where I've placed them. Basically in the game, churches are a safer place to be in and there are small statues called Stake of Americas in the game which is like your checkpoint. If you die, you get revived around there. That's why I have placed them together in this left corner and the castle being like your end goal to reach there. While also displaying a sense of scale in this particular environment by having these big ruins just like in the game. And to exaggerate having layers in the scene, I've added four cards in the middle of each layer using the easy fog pack. This allows me to quickly place fog planes in between layers or where I think there should be more fog. I've actually also made two different groups. One is to add a general fog to the entire scene and then one is to divide those layers even further. Now 
let's talk about lighting. I won't go too much into details, but I'll quickly cover the steps that I took to achieve this lighting in the scene. I've also made a video about understanding better lighting before, so make sure you check that out afterwards as well. As a base lighting, I'm using a Chaotic Sky Skybox as a sky texture, and I'm using very soft directional light combined with a real-time captured skylight to give an overall lighting before I move on to adding extra lights to push this further. Most of the heavy lifting was done with spotlights and extra lights to push the look and feel of the image. Let me break this down real quickly for you. I've added a lot of these spotlights to, to highlight the structures and give a bit more colour than just a monotone look. For instance, I have this yellow bright spotlight in front of the ruin and another spotlight coming from behind to highlight and separate the layer. I've done that with every single element in this scene, even the castles at the back. I've also added a spotlight to highlight the main church as well, giving a bit more depth, more detail popping out. And I think it's necessary to highlight all those key features of your image. Then I added a bunch of red lights to highlight the silhouette of these structures, especially in the foreground. This makes the, the elements look sharper and it also helps to not make them blend in with the background. For example, if you look at the bell here, without the red light, it's a little bit blended in, doesn't look like a bell, and adding that rim light helps a lot. Same with the building on the right and the tombstones in the foreground as well. Finally, I added a point light to support the campfire in the middle of the ruin. Now, this approach may not make it look realistic, but I wasn't aiming for realism either. And finally, to tie everything together, I added effects like low-lying fog, birds, god rays, particle effects, and an earth tree in the back using just an image plane. And to finalize this shot in Unreal Engine, I added a screen space fog scattering to make the whole image look soft and gloomy, just like the game. And after a few of the color grading in Da Vinci, this piece was finally done. Now, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys learned a few tips and tricks from this video. This was a new format of the video that I tried out. So do let me know in the comments if this is something that you would love to see more in the future. I also hope to create more videos this year. So if you have any suggestion on the topics that you would love to see, feel free to leave a comment down below as well. Until then, I'll see you guys in the next one.